about here in West Carroll Parish on Calvert Road, where this home behind me is completely missing its roof. Now, this is the aftermath of the storms that rolled through last night. Take a look at this debris. This is probably the largest chunk of debris that's just strewn across the yard with branches. Debris is filling this whole field right here. It's almost like an explosion. This tree. One of the most interesting features is this system right here, the FLIR camera, which can trace heat signatures through smoke, pitch black, and even walls. This can help find victims in total darkness. It's been a very sloppy and frigid day across the Arklamas. You probably noticed since earlier in the day that ice has been forming on trees and fences across the area. Take a look at this tree right here. It's actually making noise as it's blowing in the wind. It's completely covered in ice and you can see right here that the a little bit of ice is actually breaking it in my hands. That can make for a very messy situation. Four bus drivers had to monitor the amount of money being put into the collection boxes, but now with this new system, transit officials can upgrade to reloadable smart cards or even credit cards to pay for fare. One of the newest features in this radio system is that an officer can be as far away as New Orleans and use this radio to communicate with officers back here in Monroe. Police say they seized over $250,000 worth of toys from Thomas's residence. That includes ATVs, four-wheelers, a truck, an SUV, and even this boat. Heather, officials had originally said over the weekend that it was a bull that was on the loose, but they've clarified today that it's actually a steer. Either way, it's still a large, stubborn animal that's still on the loose. The Louisiana Department of Transportation is closing the Louisville Bridge this summer for a total of two months to repair bridge bearings. Officials tell us about 40,000 drivers use this bridge per day, so that's obviously going to impact commuters greatly this summer. Now this fire started just around 1 p.m. this afternoon here at this house behind me on Benny Brees, just off of Thomas Road in West Monroe. Oh crap. <laughs> That's the first thought through Karen Wilson's mind when she saw this line. Dozens upon dozens of vehicles lined up at a sandbagging location off Trade Street in West Monroe, most waiting two or more hours to get sand. With the wrath of Mother Nature, we don't know what to expect, so we want to be prepared, and if I have to wait an hour or two hours to save my house, I will. With Isaac just around the corner, Jason Grubbs doesn't mind the wait. If you don't have them, you put yourself in a situation you don't want to be in at midnight night when all this stuff rolls in. This is what flash flooding can look like in the area. And residents like those loading up on sandbags are doing whatever they can not to see that again. Grubbs lives in the Garden District, which he says can be prone to flooding. You just kind of have to see where your low spots, low spots are and stack there so you can kind of keep the water running to, towards the ditch or towards the drain off. We talked to a lot of those people waiting in the lines today and they said they didn't mind waiting for two hours to get these sandbags here because it's the only line of defense against the rising waters. Now they tell us it won't keep all of the water out, but it will slow it down. In addition to sandbags, folks shopping at a Brookshire's in West Monroe are also taking measures to be prepared. By stocking up on water, batteries, and canned food. We have the tendency to get scared because, you know, we don't want to lose the lights, and when you can't get out on the road, you can't get food, so we like to have food in our house. Grubb says he just wants to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. You don't want to wake up and step out of bed into two or three inches of water, so you prepare yourself for the worst. The scammers go door to door asking to perform work on your driveway, roof, or gutters. Local law officials are calling it a scam because the work doesn't match up with the money they're making people pay. He is coming David Wood is breathing a little easier. Thankful he didn't get duped. Just didn't look legit, so I told him I, I, I didn't need their services. The Washita Parish resident says he was watching NBC 10's report on a scam Tuesday evening when he heard a knock at his door. That was them sitting in my driveway trying to sell me some black top. It's a group law enforcement calls gypsy travelers. They go town to town, door to door, asking to redo a driveway with the leftover asphalt in the back of a truck. For somebody to have to go door to door 
and ask to do work like that, I assume by then they weren't legit. Wood called the Better Business Bureau in just in time, too. The scammers got to his neighbor down the street Wednesday. Sheriff deputies ran them off before the job was done. The homeowner says the group seemed legit. They had t-shirts with 800 numbers on it, even business cards. But OPSO says the work that the group did wasn't so legit. This is actually nothing but just rocks painted over. A business card does not constitute a registered business. Joanne Deal with the Better Business Bureau says they usually get calls around this time for home improvement scams. There's a reason why they don't have a brick and mortar establishment. And that's probably because they don't do business according to the rules. In the last two weeks, officials say folks in Monroe to as far as LaSalle Parish called in reports, some losing up to $10,000 in the scam. Sign contracts, get estimates, use people you know. The BBB says Monroe has an ordinance prohibiting door-to-door -door selling without an appointment. That ordinance does not apply to the parish. It's very important that consumers on the back roads tell their neighbors not to use these people Wood says seeing their out-of-state plates is all he needed to know. we got too many contractors around here that are legit for this to happen. And all this does is hurt everybody else in this area that's trying to do right with their business. Parish deputies tell us groups like these are well-versed in the law and often stay on the edge of getting arrested. Well, from the battlefields to the U.S. highways, two former drill sergeants are marching from South Carolina to California on the name of cancer research. They passed through the Arklamas this week. NBC 10's Alana Quillen joins us now with more on the story. Alana. Two combat veterans are on a journey called Rock for a Cure, wearing their old army boots and carrying a military rucksack filled with the essentials. The two are making it a goal to travel 3,000 miles from coast to coast to raise awareness and money for cancer research. We caught up with them today as they pass through West Monroe. Veterans are setting their sights on a different type of enemy not seen on the battlefield. My father was diagnosed with a uh, glioblastoma. Cancer and they're raising money for a cure one step at a time. If I put my left foot in front of my right foot and walk every day and try to raise a couple dollars and I myself can do something. After a year of planning, Wayne Whitback and James Allred began their journey in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That's what march across America and, and raise money along the way. Even with 20 years of military experience and five deployments between them, they say the 45-pound rucks still get heavier with each day. So far, the duo is about eight weeks into their journey. Since they've made it to North Louisiana, they've trekked about 850 miles. They're using Highway 80 as kind of a guide to get across the country, and their goal is to walk about 60,000 steps per day. Each carries a personal story. Allred's mother is battling cancer while Whitbeck's father lost his fight last year. People that are out there suffering from the disease and they're fighting it and battling it every day, they're going through a much more rigorous routine than we are every day. And by seeing that we're willing to, to take that left step forward, hopefully somebody's willing to fight just a little bit harder for it. For safety, they have a support vehicle on hand that also works as shelter at night, but one is always walking at all times. Uh, not all roads are safe to walk on, so we have to use that as a contingency. Their final destination, San Francisco. They hope to reach it in August, and even though the going can get tough sometimes, they say it's worth it. But then in reflection, I know we both say to ourselves, well, somebody that has to go through chemo or radiation a day might not want to do it, but they don't have the choice. So we're trying to keep the same mentality. Their goal is to raise $50,000 to donate to the St. Jude's Cancer Research Facility. So far, they've raised $5,000. If you'd like to donate to their cause, go to our homepage, myarklamist.com, where you'll find a link to their website. Alana Quillen, NBC 10 News.